All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I want to uh, make a case today why today is going to be the last day. There's nothing stopping us or stopping Jesus from coming in the clouds of heaven. Nothing stopping the end of the world. All right, and now I want to make the case for why today might be the last day and why there might only be a handful of people saved in today's world of 8 billion people. All right, but before I really get into that, I want to uh, play a clip here from Steve Lawson, I think his name is. Yeah, Steve Lawson. And just, I'm going to play a little bit here. Of verse 21 and 22, and the true Christ who will come in verse 26. And notice what will take place. Verse 24 tells us. The sun will be darkened. And the moon will not give its light. Alright, so just in case uh, you're trying to figure out what's, what, he's, what is he talking about. Where is he getting this from? He's quoting from Mark 13. Let me find the verse for you here. It says, In those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken when they see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. Okay. Light. And the stars will be falling from the heavens. You'll note in the New American Standard, those are in all capital letters, signifying that this is a quotation from the Old Testament. And this is found in multiple Old Testament. Yeah, it's found multiple places. Now, the NASB, for the sake of argument, is going to be an indicator for us that this person is not saved. Alright? So, anybody that uses the modern versions, the NASB, the NIV, the ESV, the NKJV, so on and so forth, not one single person that reads from those Bible versions believe in God. Not one single person. And how can I, how can I say that? Well, they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. They believe they have a translation of a, an imaginary Bible that does not exist. And this idea alone, even if it did exist, that idea alone would be contradictory, contrary to the Word of God. See, the Word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever and ever. All right. With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Acts chapter 2. And how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Thy word. O oh Lord, is forever settled in heaven. The Word of God is settled in heaven, not in this imaginary book that does not exist. That This imaginary book that's written in, I guess, uh, three different languages? Three different foreign languages? Two of which are dead languages? And so that's contradictory to what Paul says, that where, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Those languages have ceased. So I, I can go on and on and on about that. Bottom line is, if you read from the NASB, you do not believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is God. All right? And so... You're outing yourself when you admit that you are reading from one of these modern 
perversions. All right. Let's, anyways, let's let's listen. Old Testament passages. This is nothing new. What Jesus is saying here is not new insight on the end of the age. It is a a resurfacing of what has already been said. Isaiah 13, verse 10. Ezekiel 32, verse 7. Joel 2, verse 10 and 31. And then Joel 3 and verse 15. All teach us what Jesus is saying here. And the question has been raised, should this be taken figuratively? All right, so I don't know why you even address that question, I guess, but, but whatever. Uh, so, it's that is, it, what he said is true. Um, we could take a look at, uh, we could take a look at those, um, You know, we could take a look at these. I, I don't know that I want to walk through all these, but you can uh, surely do it yourself if you're interested. Uh, the sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Of course, and what I want to point out here is that it's not only uh, in those places that he mentioned in Isaiah and Joel and Ezekiel and so on. All right. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And, uh, I don't know, I love it though. I, I'll admit that. I love these verses. I love these. Here we go. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now, the point that I want to make here is that these are all talking about the same thing. Again, in Mark chapter 13, star shall fall, powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. In Matthew 24, uh, the sun shall not, I'm sorry, the, what did I say? The sun shall, whew, I think I need more coffee. This sun shall be darkened. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Alright. Now, I just want to point out here. It's very interesting. Knowing all these verses about the sun being darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, consider that with Second Peter chapter 3. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is the same event that we're reading in Isaiah, Joel, Ezekiel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We're reading the same thing here in 2 Peter chapter 3. All right. I want you to keep that s scenario in your mind. All right. Forget about everything that all the false teachers have ever told you. And consider this. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. The heaven and earth fled away. Alright, so now, just keep an open mind. Jesus says multiple times, or it's it's written multiple times, I should say, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Think about this. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now think about that and consider 
from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. The heaven and earth shall pass away. It's the same thing. All right, so when Jesus says, the heaven and the earth shall pass away, what's he referring to? Well, you notice here that the three times this is written, it's in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. And it's all in reference to the end of the world. All right, it's not a different thing. That's important. All right. So in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, we all read about how the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, would it help if I if I showed it to you, right? In Matthew 24, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. In Mark 13, and the stars of heaven, oh, I'm sorry, let me go up here. But the, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Just in case there's a sliver of doubt. Let's go to Luke 21. Luke 21. Let's put it right there behind Mark. Luke 21. We're going to notice here it says, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress of the nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken this is the same moment in time at the end of the world and of course all three of these examples I just gave you are all in reference to a question that the disciples asked him what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world Right, and so this is a description of the end of the world. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of all these things shall be filled? In Luke 21. And they asked the Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Of course, speaking about the end of the world. Right? The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Second Peter chapter 3, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The moon... I'm sorry, and the sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. In Isaiah, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the, ter of the terrible. <laughs> I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth, shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, in the day of his fierce anger. All right. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Right, so it's very clear that this world is coming to an end when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, this is uh, overwhelming. All right, so again, in Revelation 20, when we read, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, 
from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. All right, one more time, and then I'm going to end this video. I'm going to make it short. One more time. We read right here, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. Jesus says, heaven and earth shall pass away. All right, same thing. It's the same moment in time. It's the same thing. And in each mention of heaven and earth passing away, it is in reference to the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Each reference is directly related to the question being asked to Jesus by his disciples, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. All lays, they all lay it out. And it's all consistent. And it all says the same thing. And then in Revelation 20, we can say definitively, definitively, however you speak English, depending on your brand of English, you can say with certainty that this is parallel with what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when the sun is darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. Right? We're looking forward to a new heavens and a new earth. Right? So, here in Revelation 20, verse 11, and it's, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it. It's Jesus. Without any doubt. The evidence is overwhelming. That's Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven.